Have you ever wondered how your favorite yarns hold up after a wash? Let's find out. Hey there, I'm Brittany. If you're new here, welcome, and if not, I'm so happy you're back. In today's video, I've picked five popular yarns, some from my stash and some that I recently purchased, and I'm going to do a little review of each yarn, and then I'm going to wash and dry a little sample swatch that I make from each yarn, according to the package instructions, of course, and I'm going to see how they hold up. If this sounds like a video you'd like to see more of, be sure to give the video a thumbs up and leave me a comment. And if there's a particular yarn you've been wanting to see how it holds up in the wash, let me know and I just might do it next. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. The first one we're going to look at today is the Hooknuck Small Stuff, and this is the color Pink Peony. And just a side note, all the yarn we'll be working with today, I'll have linked down below. There's 273 yards per ball, and it is a Category 3 DK lightweight. It's 100% acrylic, and let's look at the wash instructions. Okay, so that's washing cold, do not bleach, do not iron. The P, I believe, is for dry cleaning instructions, so your garment could be dry cleaned, and no tumble dry. Good to know, so we'll remember that for later. My first impressions of this yarn is that it has a really nice squish factor and a really beautiful sheen. I really like the texture of this yarn and I'm really excited to see how it works up. This yarn is by Jessica of the Hook Nook and I actually purchased this quite a while ago from Joann's. I bought several balls of it but haven't made anything with it just yet. And the price point, at least in my local area, it was $7.99 a ball. For this swatch, I'm going to be using a 5mm hook, and I'm just going to make a small sample swatch and see how it goes. As I'm working this foundation chain, I'm noticing that the yarn is gliding really nicely on my hook, which I love. And it's because the yarn is so soft and smooth. The yarn is composed of five fiber strands that are loosely twisted together. I found that yarns of this construction tend to give really pretty textures and amazing stitch definitions, but it can also tend to split very easily as you work with it, which can be super frustrating for beginners and slow down a Susan Crocheter. I did notice that my hook wanted to split my yarn as I worked into my stitches, so it did slow me down a little bit. But even though the yarn splitting slowed me down a bit at first, once I worked my first row and found my groove, it was more smooth sailing after that. After working my first few rows, I'm really loving small stuff. I love the texture of it, I love the stitch definition, and I love the drape. With this yarn, spring and summer project inspiration is definitely coming to mind. Think wraps, shawls, and breezy summer tops, also swimsuit cover-ups. One other thing I'd like to mention is that I just wish that Small Stuff had more color options. I do like the colors that Small Stuff does come in, but I wish that there was maybe some more beigey, uh, neutral colors um, added to the line. And I don't know, just, just a few more colors. Um, honestly, I probably most yarns, I wish that they had more colors, but just wanted to throw that out there. Overall, I really like this yarn. If you're curious about it and want to try it out for yourself, I definitely recommend it. Next up is Big Twist Renewal. And this one was super interesting to me because it's made with 100% recycled acrylic. So I'm excited to see how this one works up. Let's look at the back of the label. And here are the wash instructions. So it looks like it's machine washable, low iron, do not bleach, do not tumble dry, and you can dry clean. So that's interesting. My first impressions on the back of the yarn label, it has recommended yarn amounts for various projects. I love this. I feel like not enough yarn companies do this and I'm not sure why. And actually recently I just made a yarn amounts cheat sheet over on Instagram. So if you're not following me over there, make sure you do because I share a lot of behind the scenes and also a lot of tips and tricks. So this little cheat sheet would definitely be helpful. I'm sure um, the next time you're shopping at your favorite craft store. Back to renewal. This is one that I found a couple weeks ago when I was wandering around Joann's. I've been really loving sorts of burgundies and purples lately and couldn't resist this one. I actually bought several balls of this with the idea of making a sweater. So I'm super excited to give this one a try. The yarn is super similar to your basic acrylic yarn, like Big Twist Value or Red Heart Super Saver. And I'm not sure if it's just me, but it almost looks like the color has the slightest heathered effect, and I really, really like that. The yarn itself feels super soft and smooth, and it's gliding off my hook nicely. But upon making the foundation chain, I feel like the chain was sort of looking a little scraggly. Initially, I was worried that the yarn was going to work up into a really rough and scratchy fabric, but actually I was pleasantly surprised, and more on 
that later. The cost on this one is really hard to beat. It was only $4.99 a ball, and I believe when I was at the store, I got a sale on top of that. Each ball is 290 yards, and the yarn is categorized as a three lightweight. But I would definitely say this yarn is probably on the thicker end of a lightweight yarn and closer or just under a standard medium four weight. I really liked the color options for this yarn. It had a variety of colors, lots of bright ones, as well as some standard neutrals like beige, gray, black, and white. And like I said before, this is 100% recycled acrylic. So it's always a wonderful thing to be able to reuse and give new life to something. So I love that. And if that's something that's important to you, that's a really great perk of this yarn. I am noticing on this first row that my hook wants to split this yarn, which is sort of slowing me down a little bit. But as I'm working the second row, yarn splitting seems to be a little bit less of an issue and I'm really able to find my groove and speed up my crocheting. Now that I have a few rows under my belt, I've found my rhythm and I'm really liking how this yarn is working up. This yarn makes me feel inspired to make fall and winter projects. This would be great for scarves, hats, mittens, sweaters, and cardigans. Overall, my swatch ended up working up really nice after the first couple rows, despite the chain feeling rather rough. The swatch feels quite soft and has a really lovely drape. As designers start to make patterns with this, I'm really excited to see this yarn's possibilities. If you enjoy a budget yarn like Red Hard or other yarns in the big twist line, I really think you'll like this yarn. So if that sounds like you, I totally recommend you trying this out. Next up, we have Lion Brand's Color Made Easy. Let's look at the label. It has recommended yarn amounts for a couple projects. You know I love that. And let's look at the washing instructions. We see that it's machine washable and dryable. Also, don't bleach, do not iron, and it can be dry cleaned. Each ball is 247 yards and it's characterized as a five bulky weight. And I love the variety of colors that Color Made Easy comes in. All the colors are super trendy, which is really, really fun. And like I said before, this is a bulky weight yarn. So anything you make with this will work up super quick. It's also super soft and squishable. And who doesn't love a squish factor? The construction of Color Made Easy is super similar to Hook Nook's Small Stuff, where the yarn is comprised of five fiber strands that are loosely twisted together. Like I said before, this gives a really pretty drape and a beautiful stitch definition, but you could easily split the yarn with your hook as you use it, which might slow you down a bit and could be a little bit challenging for newbie crocheters. I do find with this yarn and a lot of others, it is just the first foundation row that I have issues with my hook wanting to split the yarn. But once I have a couple rows under my belt, I'm able to find my groove and then it's just smooth sailing. Fall and winter projects come to mind to me for this one. When using this yarn, I feel inspired to make sweaters, scarves, hats, blankets, and throw pillows. I personally love this yarn. I actually used it for my twisted ear warmers a few years ago and I look forward to designing with it again. If you haven't checked out my twisted ear warmers, I'll be sure to have them linked down below and also up here as well if you'd like to check it out. If you haven't tried this yarn yet, I definitely recommend it. Next up, I have Lion Brand's Mandala Ombre in the color Tranquil. If we flip over the yarn label, we see that each ball is 344 yards and it's 100% acrylic. Wash instructions are machine washable and dryable. The weight is characterized as a four medium weight and my first impression of this yarn is that it's super soft and super smooth. As I'm working my foundation chain, I'm finding that the yarn is gliding really nicely and smoothly on my hook. And I'm really liking how the foundation chain is turning out so far. The yarn is made out of a tight twist of fibers making the yarn fiber itself rather dense, so it doesn't easily split. The yarn strand denseness also gives the yarn a really beautiful definition and texture. To me, the only thing that's lacking with this yarn is color selection. I wish there were more options for the Mandela Ombre colors. Also, they are only multicolor. I wish there was a neutral yarn in this line to add to this yarn cake to help break up the color a bit with a constant neutral. But other than that, I really, really like this yarn. As I'm working up this swatch, I'm really loving the texture of the yarn and feels that there's not enough yarn quite like this and it also has a really beautiful drape. One thing that I think makes this yarn stand out is there uh, there's absolutely no halo effect. So the stitches are really what shines. You can really see the definition here. Let's take a look at the color transition. So as you can see I've pulled out a lot of the gold and so you get a decent amount per color and now we can kind of look at the transition between the colors. So see that's gold and then it kind of slowly transitions into the pink color as you get closer to the next color. So you can kind of see the difference between those sections of the yarn. This yarn inspires me to make a colorful wrap or shawl or blanket. Overall, I highly recommend this yarn. I just love the texture and smoothness of it, and I think you will too. 
Next up, I have Red Heart Super Saver in the color Shocking Pink. If we flip over the label, we see that each ball is 364 yards, and we see that the washing instructions are machine washable and dryable, no iron and no bleach. And on a side note, did you know that you're never supposed to iron acrylic because it can actually melt? This is why you always want to use 100% cotton for things like pot holders and various kitchen items because it melts when it touches high heat and you could really end up hurting yourself. A few of my favorite things about Red Heart Yarn is that one, they have a great color selection. They carry just about every color of the rainbow, so there's always something for everyone. And also affordability. At about $3.29 a ball and usually cheaper when it's on sale, you really can't beat it. Also, it's availability. You can really get it anywhere that crafts are sold, at least in the US. Walmart, Joann's, Michael's, and etc. typically carry it. The yarn feel and weight can be kind of inconsistent. For example, this color feels a little softer than some of the other colors that are in the same line. This color feels more like Red Heart with Love, which is a softer version of Super Saver. This color also feels like it's a little bit of a lighter weight than some of the other colors in the Super Saver line as well. And like a lot of the other yarns that we looked at today, this yarn can tend to split when you work with it, which can be kind of frustrating to new crocheters. But just like with the other yarns, I do find that it's usually my first couple rows that I have issues with splitting, and then once I get past the first few rows and find my groove, it's typically smooth sailing. Super Saver always inspires me to make blankets in all sorts of them. I love using this yarn for C2C or corner to corner blankets where you follow a pixel chart. You can really get creative and bring just about any image you can imagine to life with crochet. And with Red Heart, you'll likely find all the colors you need. I also love this yarn for hats, scarves, mittens, pillows, holiday decorations, and granny blankets. Overall, if you're not afraid of using a budget yarn, I know I'm not, then I highly recommend it. This is the yarn I learned to crochet with, so it will always be near and dear to my heart. But whether you're new to crochet or not, I highly suggest giving Red Heart a try. All right, so I have all of my swatches here, and all of the yarns are machine washable in cold water. Big Twist Renewal and Hook Nook Small Stuff are the only ones that cannot be dried, so once those are out of the wash, I'll lay those flat to dry, and the rest of them will be thrown into the dryer on low heat. I'm tossing all my swatches into this laundry bag, and we'll wash them in here. We'll be washing on a regular cycle in cold water, and I'm using Original Tide Detergent. And for the swatches that actually can be dried in the dryer, I'm just keeping them in the bag and we'll throw the whole bag into the dryer. Okay, moment of truth. Obviously the swatches that were put into the dryer curled a little bit, but at first glance, they actually look really good. Let's grab the swatches that had to air dry. These obviously look the best upon first inspection because they were laying flat to dry and didn't curl. First up, small stuff. I don't know if it's just me, but it almost looks like washing it made the stitches look even more texturized than they did before washing them. And the swatch actually feels just about the same or just slightly softer than before. And remember, this was one of the ones that I had laid flat to air dry. None of the stitches look distorted in any way and I don't see any sort of pilling. The color has not faded and honestly, I can't even tell that this has been washed. I'm super impressed. I can't wait to check out the rest of these. Next, let's look at Color Made Easy. Like I mentioned earlier, this yarn is super similar in construction to small stuff. I honestly can't really tell any difference between now and before we washed it. Unlike small stuff though, I don't think that the stitch definition looks any more defined than it did prior to being washed. And because this yarn is so soft as it is, I don't think it got any softer after being washed. None of the stitches look distorted in any way, and after going through the washer and dryer, it honestly looks exactly the same, and with zero color fade. I don't know about you, but I'm always afraid to wash things I've made for fear that I'd ruin it, but I'm finding these results, at least so far, to be extremely encouraging. Moving on to Big Twist Renewal. This is the other swatch that I had laid flat to air dry. My first impressions of this one is that I think it did soften up in the wash, and I'm noticing just the slightest halo effect, but it doesn't look bad in any way, and I'm not seeing any sort of pilling. Another thing I'm noticing is that the swatch is much more pliable, so I think washing the yarn is giving it much more of a drape. So let's say you made a shawl with this, I think it would definitely have a much prettier drape after a wash. And once again, none of the stitches are distorted in any way, and despite being a bold color, there is no noticeable color fade. I have to say, I'm pretty shocked so far. I was expecting to see pilling, color fade, yarn frizz, and I'm not seeing any of that. This is super encouraging and definitely starting to chip away my fears of washing my homemade items. 
Next, I have Mandela Ombre. I first noticed that I'm seeing a little bit of yarn frizz. Well, I don't know that I can call it yarn frizz, but maybe just the slightest halo effect. I'm noticing that first just because this yarn was so super smooth from the start that the first thing I'm noticing is the slight halo effect, but the stitch definition and texture still look amazing. The stitches are not distorted in any way, but like Renewal, the swatch definitely feels more pliable after washing it, and I just know that if this swatch were a scarf or a shawl, it would have amazing drape. Again, not seeing any sort of pilling and the color has no noticeable fade. Last but not least, I have Red Heart Super Saver. I'm noticing the slightest halo effect on the swatch, and I do think that it feels slightly softer than what it did before washing and drying. Once again, there's no pilling and the stitches are not distorted. While the swatch does feel softer, washing it didn't seem to make the swatch any more pliable, which I was sort of surprised about. And despite being such a bold color, there's no noticeable fading. I have to say I'm shocked. I honestly can't believe how much the swatches didn't actually change after washing them. That's not to say that they wouldn't fade, pill, frizz up after repeated washing over time, but in this initial experiment, they all held up incredibly well. So in conclusion, I'm definitely standing with my original reviews of each yarn, and I highly recommend all of them. Are there yarns you're curious about but you don't want to take the plunge? Let me do it for you. Tell me in the comments which yarns you want me to wash and review next. Oh, and if you're still here, are you subscribed yet? If not, what are you waiting for? Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, bye!